Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Game Changer. I'm Maryam Zia. In today's program, we will be talking about the growing ties between Pakistan and Australia. When we talk about Pakistan's relations with Australia, of course, the diplomatic relations dates back to early 50s. Uh, but since then, both countries have uh, collaborated in a number of fields uh, when we look at the relationship between the two countries. Uh, in the recent years, both countries have worked together uh, to increase uh, the bilateral trade between the two countries and there are other areas of cooperation in which both countries are collaborating further. In today's program, we will be talking about uh, these areas of cooperation. But when we look at Pakistan's relations with Australia, there are few challenges as well. What are those challenges? and how to address those challenges we will be talking about in today's program. To discuss this and more, I'm joined in the studios by Ambassador Naila Chohan. Uh, Ambassador Naila has also served in Australia uh, as well. So we'll be talking about uh, Pakistan's relations with Australia. And we are joined online by Dr. Stan Jawed, who is economist and uh, international affairs expert. A very warm welcome to you both in the program. Ambassador Naila, let me start with you. Of course, uh, when we look at the history of uh, Pakistan, relations with Australia. Australia was uh, one of the few countries uh, who accepted and who established uh, diplomatic relations with Pakistan very early. So how do you see these relations with Pakistan have evolved over time and what are some of the key milestones between the two countries? Well, first of all, the relations between Pakistan and Australia are very well founded. I would often joke that uh, it's before our independence. Hmm. In 1840, hmm. the Camellias came hmm. to Australia and they built their uh, railway tracks. Of course. So I would say we have helped you in your development, now you help in our de development. So it's reciprocity. And then when we became independent, it was one of the first embassies that we established. And you must not forget that in 1907, uh, our linkages between staff college, the principal of our staff college, the first one, was of Australian origin. So consequently, the milestones that you're talking about, starting from Cavaliers, mm -hmm. who went there, who worked hard. And we established our uh, diplomatic relations in 1948. 48, right. And then uh, embassy of course, exchange of embassies. And since then, we have been working together. Uh, we see many issues from the same perspective. Uh, when we had the Kashmir issue, uh, UN established the United Nations Military Observer Group on India-Pakistan. Austro Australia was one of the first contributors to it. And uh, they would, I would, as ambassador in Australia, meet a lot of uh, Australians from defense forces who had served in Pakistan. They knew better Urdu than most Pakistanis because they had lived here and they had worked on the line of control of that time. So since then, you can see the foundations were very strong. Of course, yeah. foundations uh, of the relationship between the two countries were very strong. Uh, we are also joined in the program by Dr. Zafar Nawaz Jaspal, who is IR expert. Welcome to the program, uh, Dr. Jaspal. Uh, but Dr. Hassan, uh, let me start with you. Uh, of course, uh, when we talk about uh, relationship between the two countries, like uh, Ambassador Naila has rightly pointed out that there is a history uh, behind the two relationships. So how do you see that this history of the relationship and the strong bond between the two countries have evolved over time and how this has influenced the current state of relationship between the two countries? So eventually they are going uh, better and better every day, but uh, a few circumstances and the uh, block politics is uh, slightly different. Mm -hmm. But if I go back to the history, so diplomatic relationship uh, between Pakistan and Australia were established in 1948. Uh, the ambassador Naila uh, is uh, very much right in the scenario that uh, we were the uh, we were the country that uh, uh, actually helped them, and now it is time to help us. So since then, the two countries have maintained the cordial relationship, and the Australian government engaged the Pakistan in the area of the security cooperation, including defense, law, uh, enforcement training, human rights, economic reforms, and development, and including through the uh, an active program of official level dialogue and engagement. So 
the political relationship if i talk about the uh, i mean in link with the diplomatic relationship with the political relationship is like between the pakistan and serbia is in mark by the mutual respect and understanding the two countries have supported each other on a various regional and international issues and australia has supported pakistan in this effort to combat terrorism which is very much important terrorism and extremism so they have supported every time although they have the part of the courts although they have the part of uh, mm-hmm. the i although they have uh, other things out but continuous part of pakistan and uh, dr jaspal how do you describe the current state of political relations between australia and pakistan and what are some of the key areas of cooperation uh, between the two countries in this particular sector i think that uh, we have a vast scope of political relations and there are many areas where we have been cooperating as ambassador naila was pointing out that uh, since uh, the beginning we had a diplomatic and relations and people to people contact within the political domain we have to keep in mind that pakistan and australia works together in a non traditional security domain for example we support the australians in the migration or class national crime similarly we learn from there then we have a big agriculture sector australia is very active and pakistan is very much interested in the climate change and in the climate challenges and there we have been supporting and learning from each other's good practices that is a big area then there are many uh, you can say areas where australia and pakistan have a understanding that how we can address the resources and in a future resources that is a very important point in this context so starting from the united nation cooperation on the climate human rights migration cross national crimes and also in our region security that is very important for australians as well that if you see we have been cooperating each other in the domain of terrorism and these kind of the things so by this way my understanding is that uh, we have a large area for a cooperation Of course. Uh, so, uh, Ambassador Na- Naila, how do you view uh, these uh, political relations between the two countries, and uh, how do you see what are some of the key areas of cooperation in which both countries can cooperate further? Well, uh, in political domain, uh, there are many dimensions. Mm-hmm. There are certain areas where we work together, and there are other areas where uh, their perspective is different from ours. as far as uh, cooperation is concerned we have been uh, working together uh, as you know australia was a big contributor to isaf forces also in afghanistan at the time uh, for quite a long time about 20 years their troops were here so my aussie friends would say we are your neighbors you know because obviously their troops were next door to ours uh so we have been working together on anti terrorism mm. counter terrorism uh on the cves violent uh, extremism, extremism of course and we have been uh working on border management uh as far as agriculture is concerned um it it was good that uh, when i was ambassador there uh, i would meet people in dfat and acr which is a uh, australian center for international agricultural research and they would say we want to cooperate in the areas which you are interested in because unfortunately the balance of trade is in their favor so we were wanting to export our you know agricultural products our mangoes or quinoas <coughs> or other products but their laws were very stringent so our products could not cross their customs hmm. but with my negotiations we managed to establish in pakistan uh, vapor heating treatment plants so any product that was destined for australia had to go through that so that there is no fruit flies and no other problems consequently alhamdulillah our products started getting access to australian markets hmm. yet uh, as far as the balance of trade is concerned 
there is a long way to go but mm. they're also helping us in making our products particularly agricultural products uh, value added and more competitive in international market. Hmm. So, uh, Dr. Asnayan, of course, uh, when we talk about uh, bilateral trade between the two countries, like Ambassador Naila has uh, pointed out that there is a lot that needs to be done. So, how do you view uh, the current state of economic trade and business relations uh, between the two countries? What are some of the key uh, areas of cooperation uh, between the two countries and what is the trade volume and how to increase uh, this trade volume between the two countries? Uh, a very pertinent question. Well, trade relation between Pakistan and Australia have been uh, steadily growing, and, uh, and that is uh, a different part of what I was talking about. Uh, the Pakistan and Australia bilateral trade, in the, uh, if I talk about the calendar year 20, uh, till 2022, was 783 million, and though uh, declining by 8.6% uh, in uh, 2020. But in uh, 2021, the bilateral trade was increased by 84% during the last three years compared with the pre-pandemic uh, pre uh, year. So according to the Pakistan Bureau statistics, the total uh, trade between the two countries is about uh, 469 million in 2020 and 2021, with the Pakistan export to Australia amounting is about US to, uh, 211 million and import from Australia amounting to 258. Uh, so the major export, if I talk about, so the textile uh, is uh, made up by the 129 million, garment is, uh, is 73 uh, USD billion, uh, million, sorry. The cereal is mainly asked for the rights. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Jaspal, uh, let me ask you th the same question. How do you see the economic relations between the two countries? And what are some of the key challenges and barriers when we talk about these economic relations? I, I think that uh, the economic relations between uh, Pakistan and Australia has a big scope. And there is a probability of furthering or widening the scope. So, in this context, let me start with this. We have a textile and the, our products are very much acceptable in Australia. Of course, to improve it further, there is need to add a quality. So if we can add a quality in our production, what we call it value added in our textile industry, definitely it will further enhance our cooperation with Australia. The second area is agribusiness. In the agribusiness, we Australians are very good, and we have a good research and development. But of course, in that context, in the first, we will have to see the Australians' good practices, because they have a very, uh, you can say, strict measures, or when they go for importing food items or these kind of the things. Of course, if we can increase the quality or uh, try to pack our, let's say, fruits, rice, etc., which we uh, plan to export to Australia, uh, especially in a certain kind. Uh, we have a here different season and they have a different season. So seasonal vegetables and fruits can go. But for that, we have to make a certain criteria. And for that criteria, of course, we have to look for the Australians for how they or which kind of the criteria they are expecting. The third area in this context is IT. We have a good IT junk train and we our youngsters are contributing. And Australians need this kind of the assistance, which could be from here or they can go there. And then, of course, uh, Australian economy is very much beneficiary of foreign students. And they are also offering large number of these students. If you see, uh, currently around 1 million Pakistani citizens or Pakistanis mm. are in Australia as a diaspora. And uh, around 20 to 15,000 current currently Pakistani students are studying in the Australian institutions. Mm -hmm. What is the good for us is that Australia has a good, uh, you can say, niche in the dairy industry. And in Pakistan, mm -hmm. in the last four or five years, the dairy industry has started gaining a momentum, a professional dairy industry. And we can learn from them how we can manage it, further improve the, where uh, you can say, right. and we are importing the cows from there. So there are uh, similarly, then once we are importing, then we can go for exporting and there is a breed change or these kind of the collaborations can be worked out. And finally, in this context, of course, Australia has a large number of minerals, especially Australia has the third biggest uranium reserve 
and it is the third biggest uranium exporter for civilian use. Of course, Australia is a member of NSG and we have no waiver, but one can work out it because now these kind of the cartels are becoming more flexible. Uh, one can work and think about it, but of course, then finally, I can submit that climate right. change, it is a big right. concern for the Australians as well as us. Right, of course, uh, of course. Uh, so, Dr. Stan, uh, let me come back to you. Uh, we were earlier talking about the main goods and services that are traded between Pakistan and Australia. So, uh, tell us about those as well. And uh, also, I want to ask you about uh, the Pakistani diaspora in uh, Australia. Like uh, Dr. Jaspal has mentioned, there is a huge Pakistani diaspora. How do you see that this diaspora is contributing to Pakistan's economy or could contribute to Pakistan's economy? So as I was talking about the 10 export products, which is mainly because I, I, I'm i using the number in the millions so that we can understand how can we increase the number in the millions of the products. So right. iron and the steel, then I talk about the leather, uh, processed food, textile fabric, surgical instrument is about the 9.5 million, so it is a very huge market, we must have to work on it, and uh, especially the piece of industries must have to focus on it. Then is the sports good uh, uh, is about 5.2 million to uh, according to me it is very much less. Then is the Mike Agro food so uh, uh, is agri for me with a high quality structure and uh, procedure. And uh, to understand, our goes to uh, uh, done with the refinery system and we have the first refining system ever in Pakistan. So right. Uh we have some uh, audio issue in your uh, connection or network connection. Uh, you are unaudible uh, to us, uh, Dr. Stan. I'll come back to you. So, uh, Ambassador Naira, as we are discussing the economic relations between the two countries, of course, you, has, you have uh, served in Australia. How do you see uh, what are some of the key areas where there are a number of opportunities for Pakistani businesses to make investments in Australia and vice versa? You see, it has to be a synergy. Hmm. And uh, our focus basically was that Pakistani businessmen should participate in the trade fairs mm -hmm. because that's how they would see what we have to offer and we would see uh, who is interested in our products. Mm -hmm. Already there are about 22 Australian companies that are investing in Pakistan, including agriculture, infrastructure development like SMEC, the Snowy Mountain uh, engineering company in mining, uh, so, th there is Australian investment going on in Pakistan as well. When it comes to our exports, like Dr. Jaspal and Dr. Hasnan have already mentioned, I don't want to repeat mm, that, course. but it is valid. And uh, we are doing exports in uh, textiles, mm. bed linen. But like you earlier mentioned as well, there are a number of trade barriers at the moment that yes. we, uh, that our businesses uh, face. So what steps are being taken or should be taken uh, to address these trade barriers and other challenges while doing business? Actually, it is the Joint Trade Commission meeting in which they discuss all these issues. JTC meets regularly. And in that, they uh, discuss the bottlenecks and how to remove them. Now, uh, I wouldn't use the word barriers because there are a lot of non-tariff barriers also. And with Australia, uh, they don't call it barriers. They just say these are restrictions and not preconditions. Mm. But for us, it becomes a barrier. But for them, right. they say so no. So how to enhance this market Enhance, access? we were working, we are cooperating. Mm. For example, I'll give you an interesting example. We wanted to export our mangoes. Now, you know that in orchards, uh, some fruits are taken at the right time, but a lot of it is wasted because it falls. Mm. And when it falls, it becomes perishable. So with Australian cooperation, with RCR and PARC, we're working together, and they uh, came up with this technology that you pick up those uh, fruits that are lying down, mm, of course and you make chutneys out of it, jams out of it, so that that is not wasted. Uh, same goes for our sea industry, the blue economy. Uh, Australia is very strong in that, so we were learning their technologies for packaging, because uh, as far as uh, our products are concerned, they are top of the world. But unfortunately, we don't have the preservation 
the packaging facilities so our products either hmm. perish or rot before they reach their destinations right. be it in EU be it in anywhere so it's basically uh, sharing technology to enhance our products not only to Australia but everywhere else but with the help of Australians we are working on this so Joint Trade Commission is meeting on it regularly but coming back to your point on political cooperation we also have a bilateral political uh, consultation. cooperation mm. consultations which meets uh, and discusses the political uh, issues of mutual interests uh, so uh, we are working at different uh, you know platforms of course. be it 1.5 track dialogue be it defense cooperation be it joint working group on border management be it uh, bilateral consultations, political consultations, be it right. joint trade commission. So there are several areas we have already institutionalized through which we are working together. Of course, there are a number of areas in which Pakistan uh, and Australia are working in cooperation, but there are certain challenges as well. Exploring Pakistan's relations with Australia. Uh, Dr. Jaspal, uh, when we talk about Pakistan's relations with Australia, like we earlier discussed that there are a number of areas in which both countries are cooperating. But when we talk about challenges, how do you see what are uh, key challenges in these relations uh, when we talk about specifically about Quad, uh, that Australia being member of Quad, how does it impact uh, its relations with Pakistan? It's an open secret that the Quad has now become uh, what we call it a military alliance or a security alliance. And in this, India, Australia, United States, and China are its members. According to Chinese literature, Chinese are saying Quad is a, Australia, you can say, Asian NATO. Uh, recently, Indian, uh, the Australian Prime Minister had also expressed his cooperation in security matters with India and it's highlighted the Quad. Now here is a point that Quad is basically focusing on Asia Pacific or what we call it in the Quad language or the American strategic terminology or Indian strategic term terminology Indo-Pacific strategy. Australia is not directly in confrontation or any, having any dispute with Pakistan as earlier uh, Ambassador Nala has also uh, pointed out, and my other colleague, and I as well. But in the context of Quad, our worries is not that if Australia is there, or United States, or uh, you can say Japan, our most important problem is that in the Quad, India is also partner. And with India, we have a territorial dispute. With India, we have a deadlock. With India, we have a enmity. And that's why right. anything which strengthens directly or indirectly India's naval forces or India's overall military strength or military power, naturally Pakistan has a concern. Of course, of course Pakistan we have has a concern, a... Dr. Jaspal. Pakistan has a concern. But what role does uh, Quad play in Australia's strategic cal calculus when we talk about that? Uh, I think that if Quad will be going to mature, as a real alliance and block it. But we are, the Quad had its own challenges. Uh, China and Australia has a bigger trade volume than China and India. Or, uh, no, or, or Australia and India, or Australia and US, or Australia and Japan. So by this way, Quad is there. But naturally, when they have a military alliances or these kind of the things, they have a certain target. Generally, Quad is targeting China. Pakistan is a strategic partner of China and Pakistan is a, as you can say, rival in the Indian Ocean or in South Asia of India. So that's where, when we look at, we are very much concerned. But I'm using word concern very carefully because in the Quad, as I pointed out earlier, 
Pakistan has a good bilateral relation with Australia, with United States, with Japan. But only problem for us is India. And we expect from the Quad members that they will keep in mind that India shall not use Quad entirely against or undermining our interest. But of course, they are in a park, uh, alliance. And in that alliance, we cannot ignore these kind of the developments. Of course, when they use the word Indo-Pacific, that means, and then though Americans had already announced India as a net security provider of in Indian Ocean, but out beyond South Asia, Indian Ocean, uh, if you see their national security documents, uh, at the same time, we have to see that if India is a net security provider, how the Australians are looking, but Australian Prime Minister had also ensured the Indians that being a, right. within the framework of Quad, they assist the India. That's why it's not easy for Pakistan to ignore these developments in the Indian Ocean hmm. or particularly right. of course. Uh, of evolution course. of the Quad into a real military alliance. Of course. So, Ambassador Naila, this is very interesting. How do you see that uh, Quad would impact or is impacting the regional uh, balance of power uh, in this part of the region, of course? And what would be the implications of Australia's alliance in such, you know, uh, blocks um, on its bilateral relations with Pakistan? Uh, Maryam, you're a student of international relations. And you know that China and India are strategic partners also. So while India, uh, you know, like the other time also I was saying that they have strategic deception. They are in all the alliances and you really don't know which side they're on. So while uh, China-India trade is very strong, Australia-China trade is very strong. China is actually the biggest trading partner of Australia. And uh, some of my friends in Australia would joke that, oh, our foreign policy suffers from bipolar disease. We are, uh, you know, having strongest uh, trade relations with China and strongest security relations with USA. So uh, I would say, how do you balance that? Uh, and they say, well, <laughs> we are muddling through in the sense that, uh, of course, they can't afford to give up China because uh, there's a large Chinese community in Australia as well. Uh, they are trading with Australia. So if China uh, boycotts, uh, boycotts uh, Australian products, Australia would be in deep trouble. They right. can't afford to do that. Same goes for India. India is part of AUKUS, but then uh, it is also partnering in SEO and it's also partnering uh, with China. So these alliances uh, basically are very fluid. They are very fluid. So do you think that Quad can serve as a platform for increasing regional or for promoting regional integrity or uh, integration or cooperation? Or this is going to be other way around? It is uh, going to enhance tensions among these regions, like you earlier mentioned about China and Australia trade volume. Yes. Uh, is this going to impact those relations as well? I wouldn't like to predict at this moment. But uh, you could see that uh, Quad was established in 2017. It was revived in 2017. It was basically uh, an idea of the Japanese Prime Minister Ebe. So from then onwards, it has been going uh, through various phases. Uh, the new Prime Minister of Australia, Mr. Albanese, uh, I think three days after joining, uh, he had to go to the Quad summit. Uh, they are basically focused on uh, curtailing China in South China Sea. Mm. Uh, they haven't gone beyond that. But when it came to submarines, Australia uh, almost had a deal with France to import uh, French submarines. And then because of court, they changed their uh, strategy and bought submarines from USA which created difficulty in Australia-France relationships. 
So, these uh, relationships basically, you know that international order is evolving. Of course. Things are changing. It is not meant, a quad is not meant to be inclusive. Hmm. BRI is inclusive. Right. But quad is, uh, was initially supposed to be an informal alliance, but now it is emerging as more of a defense or military uh, block as well, like uh, Dr. Jaspal earlier pointed out as well. Yes, true. Uh, but uh, you know that Pakistan Navy and Australian Navy do exercises, joint of exercises course. in Kokadu. Hmm. And we uh, uh, cooperate in uh, peacekeeping missions as well. Of exactly. Course. And then our defense forces are trained in ADFA, Australian Defense Forces uh, Academy. And their officers come to our NDU. So this cooperation is going on. And when it comes to security, we have security cooperation with Australia as well. Right. So I wouldn't take it uh, as alarming as it sounds. Okay, uh, Ambassador Naila won't take it uh, very alarming as it sounds. But uh, Dr. Sen, how do you see it? Uh, that uh, can uh, what are potential risks, risks and benefits for Pakistan uh, for uh, you see engaging with Quad and uh, can Australia help? Uh, Pakistan in navigating this complex landscape? It is alarming. It is actually alarming. It is 110% alarming. It is uh, just not Quad. It is Japan, Australia, India and America. And there is I2, U2 is Israel, India, USA and UK. So you must have to worry about it. It is not about chit chat and having a snack in NDU. It is uh, more than that. We have a, a, a combined force uh, a, I mean, exchange program, we have the education exchange program, we have the hundred and thousand of the exchange programs, but uh, considering the fact they are uh, making our brain uh, of our student against Pakistan or against ideology of the BRI, against the Chinese ideology of uh, 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 Belt and Road Initiative, Belt and Road Initiative is about 140 countries and Quad is against the influence of Ch Chinese influence over in Pakistan and Southeast Asian region. We are against the ASEAN, we are against our, all over other things and the Quad is, the main purpose of the Quad is to cut down the influence of China and Belt and Road Initiative, considering the fact still, still uh, so far now, uh, when Donald Trump is against the Huawei, uh, and they have cut down all the, uh, I mean, supply lines of Huawei and now Huawei is not uh, anywhere in America. And they have, uh, I mean, boycott most of the uh, companies in uh, China. But they cannot beat China in the low cost pro uh, productivity. Japan cannot cut down. Uh, Australia cannot cut down. China is there. Uh, 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 you can say it's a permanent, uh, a constant noise for them. They wanted to cut it off, but they can't because it is a cost uh, productivity. It is one of the highest productivity level. It's the most low product area. And the, uh, most of the American Americans are surviving on the Chinese product. Australians are surviving on the Chinese product. So whole of the consumer society is just using the Australian uh, uh, Chinese product. So Australian product is high in the cost. American product is high on the cost. Japanese product are high on the cost to recent. Uh, if I talk about the recent agreements to the bilateral trade in textile tourism, right, so right. part of uh, tourism is uh, going down uh, uh, less than 1%, it was 3.5% to 5% of agreement to the US bilateral trade, especially in the field of agriculture and uh, tourism. So if their agriculture is, we must have to do with that. But to say, discuss the possibility of preferential market access under the formal agreement like the PTA and FTA between the Pakistan and Australia, we must have to focus on it. And second, I wanted to talk about the 18th session of Pakistan and Australia, senior talk, uh, senior talk, what we call it SOTs, as well as state talk in the Islam March uh, 2023. So they are talking about the politics, economics, development, science, technology, education, defense, uh, uh, migration and other things and the climate change. But very important thing is uh, the I uh, textile export as just was uh, pointing out very uh, importantly that it is estimate GDP of 1.4 trillion. We must right, have to of focus. Course. You are not audible to us, uh, Dr. Snan. Uh, Dr. Jaspal, let me ask you about this uh, 
a quad and uh, what are potential risks and benefits for Pakistan of being engaged uh, with quad and how can Australia help Pakistan in navigating uh, this landscape? We have to make it clear. I, I second what uh, Ambassador Naila Saab has said. It's not alarming, but of course we cannot ignore. The quad is challenging for us because India is there, but we have to wait and see how quad impacted. We, are, we have to not forget, we are living in a world, especially today's world, where there is a paradoxical situation, evolving strategic competition, and at the same time, progressing economic connectivity. Quad is meant for China. Did Quad hamper any kind of a engagement between China and Australia. They had uh, some problem, but now once again, it, they have sorted out and their economic cooperation started. China and Japan, they are a challenger to each other uh, on the strategic chessboard, but they are very much cooperating on in the economic Of course, they domain. are cooperating, so but Pakistani there are other alliances in the region. Uh, how do you see the impact of AUKUS for that matter on the region and uh, on bilateral relations between Pakistan and Australia? Please keep in mind that Pakistan's foreign policy is based on one principle, no block politics. We have to engage each and every one. Now, in this context, when you look about AUKUS, it deals with the submarines. Uh, Australians are facing a big challenge to convince the international community that it will be not a violation of Article 2 of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, and Australia has been advocating Non-Proliferation Treaty. Similarly, the Americans and the Britishers have to also convince the world when they have to materialize AUKUS that it's not a violation of Article 1 of the NPT by them. Having said this, if the Australians get, hypothetically speaking, these nuclear-propelled submarines, obviously it will open up a new Vista, and that is beneficially for states like Pakistan, which are also looking for a nuclear propelled submarines, though no one is ready to sell us because being a member of the NPT. So if they, these countries amend it or use this, it set a precedent which will be going to assist Pakistan also. India had already had a, this kind of a deal with the Russia. So, of course, if you of are course. asking within the domain of non-proliferation, yes, it's a big challenge for the non-proliferation regime. But if you are asking for Pakistan's national security, I think that there's no need to worry. It's something right. with the Asia-Pacific no, no and uh, sea communication. Of course, of Indian course. Ocean so, Ambassador Naila, like uh, Dr. Jaspal is saying, there are certain challenges, uh, but there is no need to worry. So how do you see the future prospects of Pakistan's relations uh, with uh, Australia? And specifically, I want to ask you about uh, cooperation in development uh, sector and social and economic development. Uh, yes, I agree with what uh, Dr. Jaspal said. Um, and Dr. Hasnan also, he said uh, in a different way that uh, we cannot be oblivious of, of it. Course. Uh, but we need not panic about it. And the interesting thing is, and I would often ask that why is India not part of AUKUS? Obviously, uh, India is not that uh, relevant to uh, their issues. Uh, so that's why India was not included in AUKUS. In Quad, yes, but why not AUKUS? AUKUS came afterwards. Of course. So it, that itself shows uh, India's... Uh, a nuisance value in this. So we need not worry about it. Right. But we cannot be oblivious of, of it. Of course. So let's talk about the future prospects. Future prospects are bright because uh, the world is changing. And you know that we have more than uh, 1.25 million Pakistanis in Australia. Hmm. Uh, just in Melbourne, uh, in, in Victoria, the number has increased. And Alhamdulillah, I can say happily that I was the one who initiated a consulate general in Melbourne. Nice. We had one in Sydney to help our community. Our diaspora is very right. smart. We have one lady parliamentarian, Mehreen, uh, also. 
So once these people entrench into the political system, they are educated, they are sending remittances, they are very nice uh, Australians of Pakistani origin, they right. are a good bridge. And they also help in transfer of technology of because course. they are very smart, they are engineers, they are technocrats. Right. So there is a IT lot of specialists. potential in yes, people so to people context as well. Thank you very that much. That creates a bridge. Right, of course. That act as a bridge and, and that's that can a game create, changer. <laughs> of course, that is going to be a game changer. Thank you very much, Ambassador Naila Chohan, for Thank joining you. in today's program. Thank you very much, Dr. Sain Javed, for joining in today's program. Thank you very much, Dr. Zafar Nawaz Jaspal, for being with us in today's program. Uh, this brings us to the end of today's discussion on Pakistan's relations and growing uh, ties with Australia. Of course, there are certain challenges uh, when we talk about Pakistan's relations with uh, Australia, but through dialogue and cooperation, uh, there is uh, a chance and there are a bright future for enhancing uh, the relationship between the two countries. That's all from Game Changer tonight. Take care. Allah Hafiz.